and welcome to the Manchester Culture Bunker. Don't forget to subscribe and like. We're back on one of those great Manchester books. Now, this is a slim volume, very readable, but by one of the most important journalists to me that has ever come out of Manchester, and that is Sarah Champion. From the age of 16, she was writing in The Enemy, but she was going to every single gig going, you know, and she was like the ultimate pop kid, if you like, and had, had great taste. Uh, she was a Charlton girl. And I have to say, it was really inspiring because uh, the, there's so many women involved in the history of Manchester music. And what she does here, a lot of these uh, are articles that she wrote or based on articles that she'd written in the Manchester Evening News. But she inherited a page called the Word Page in the Manchester Evening News, which was dedicated to covering the local music scene. Uh, from, from a guy called Mick Middles, who was a well-established and a great Manchester journalist. He'd written for Sounds and Melody Maker. And she came in at the age of 16, writing for the NME, writing for the Manchester Evening News, and took it all over. And focused not just on bands like the Stone Roses, who kind of missed out a little bit, um, but also all the, all the great black music coming out of Manchester at the time, you know, the hip-hop stuff, uh, Prince Cool, MC Busby, um, the Ruthless Rap Assassins, all of those. And, and this, uh, And God Created Manchester, was the first Manchester book that came out. You see, Sarah Champion took over from one of the great uh, Manchester music journalists, Mick Middles, uh, doing the evening news, the Word page, and it was she kind of revolutionised it, and she she wrote about all those bands at last, you know, like the Ruthless Rap Assassins, MC Busby, uh, Prince Cool, MC Tunes, uh, 808 Stay, a guy called Gerald, um, you know, the Stone Roses, Happy Mondays, in Spiral Carpets, you know, she just went, she just went into it, the man from Del Monte, um, you know, she had such massive enthusiasm, she went to every single gig, and I, I found her very inspiring as as a said and I don't think she realised how important she was. I think other people in Manchester did and were quite mean and cruel to her because this was a 16, 17, 18 year old woman who, who had a finger on the pulse that none of the rest of us had really at the time because I followed her because what she, she was covering every base which had never been done in Manchester before. You know, a girl from Charlton really from with quite a strict upbringing and I love this one where it's uh, part of an article where she goes, move over Tony. So it's about Tony Wilson, and uh, she interviewed him in the Granada Canteen in June 1988. And he, he basically was there uh, saying, you know, that there's nothing happening in Manchester at the moment. And she was going, have you not been down to your own club, the Hacienda, recently? The place is absolutely jumping. Now, Tony, Tony Wilson is a figurehead and a catalyst, was brilliant, but often he didn't know what was really going on in the music scene or in his own club. I mean, obviously, once he found out, then he, then he reinterprets it and, in, and reinvents the wheel. But uh, Sarah Champion really had the courage to kind of take him on, have a little dig in the press, which he wouldn't have liked Tony at the time and certainly didn't, but she was amazing, I have to say. And uh, what, what, what's even more interesting, and she doesn't really mention in this book, was often what you will get is this myth that Manchester was all built around the Hacienda, when in fact it wasn't. If you think about factory records, what did they sign in terms of artists in 1989, the year of Manchester? They signed a classical roster, a one-man band, Rob Gray, who used to busk in uh, St Anne's Square, a pub folk rock band called uh, To Hell With Burgundy, and I think that was it. They didn't sign 808 State or a guy called Gerald, or go looking, you know, for, for like the next big thing. I mean, it was only in 1990 when they, they kind of signed, you know, people like, um, what is it, Northside. But, you know, they, they, they hadn't touched on what was really going on in Manchester in 88, 89. And they were kind of out of kilter with it and playing catch up. But obviously they played catch up very well and reinvented the wheel with all this stuff about indie dance crossover, which is, you know, fair enough. But let me let you in on a secret. You know when I, used to, when I used to like the Buzzcocks, and lots of people did in 1977, 78, guess what? We also liked Earth, Wind and Fire. You know, dance to Earth, Wind and Fire, but like the Buzzcocks. Indie dance crossover, if you like. Anyway, recommend it if you can get this book, just because it really documents that kind of enthusiasm of the Manchester era 
and God created Manchester. It seems a bit cut and paste, but because it's written in such a way with such enthusiasm, as I said, very, very underrated. And again, a great example of the women that have been left out callously almost of the story of the history of Manchester music. And she was so important. So that's Sarah Champion and, and God created Manchester. Thank you. Yeah.